Funding for Shape Realist is provided by Dr. Skipper. You what? Godzilla X Kong is without a doubt a cinematic Godzilla X Kong has been one of the most bizarre releases in recent memory. And to make matters worse, the one major trailer we got for it did not exactly paint a very flattering picture. Look at this. This is not a real movie. This is not a real movie. This is a cartoon. This is a cartoon. You have these two running like people. You have Godzilla and Kong running like people. These are not real animals. These are not these are not animals that the movie would try and believe make me believe are real. These are not No, this is my suspension of disbelief. This just killed a part of my suspension of disbelief that I didn't even know I had until I lost it right now. I just... They're running like people. They're... It looked like a typical generic KIDS movie that didn't really do anything new or interesting like the other ones did. Wrong. I wasn't particularly excited, but I figured I'd go in with an unopened mind and maybe it would surprise me like minus one. And you know what? It did surprise me. Godzilla X Kong is not only an improvement over the minus one in literally every way, but it's legitimately one of the best films I've ever seen in my life. If anything, I was more invested in the Godzilla stuff. The human drama was great too, though, obviously. And the main character's struggle to continue living after everything he went through. It was a fantastic and very well done storyline. They even managed to get the rights to certain Disney characters like Timon and Pumbaa, and also Hades, who was invented by Disney for the 1997 film Hercules. This movie, Godzilla, is played by Reggie. Talk about fitting casting. I legitimately cannot think of anyone else more qualified to play this role other than God himself. Holy Shrek. I love Shake as Kong. Anyway, his backstory is a lot more fleshed out in this movie, which is a godsend compared to Kung Fu Panda, where they had to wait until the second one to give him a compelling backstory because they forgot the first time. Anyway, I have yet to talk about the greatest character in the film. That, of course, being the villain, Walter White, played by Yummo Wickersham. Undoubtedly my pick for the best villain in any DreamWorks movie. Yummo Wickersham. His distinct, sinister voice is un forgettable for one. And there's also the great way they make use of his design for the few fight scenes he has. They knew exactly how to translate a dude monkey, of all things, into a competent fighter, making him shoot shit and use them as a distraction. But mainly, his greatest intimidation factor is the fact that he's above kung fu battles. He has an army of dude monkeys at his disposal and a massive frobbing horse cock. Wait, what? James, he's a dude monkey. Do you know how big dude monkey are? William, if these videos get demonetized, that affects your pay too. It's kind of weird that I went this long without discussing the actual story, but to be honest, I just wanted to save the best part of the movie for last. Romeo is really sad because he doesn't have a nice seal lady in his life. But don't worry, his good buddies Benvolio and Mercutio are here to cheer him up with a song. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention, this is a musical, bitch. And I think the first song here is a great indication of the quality of the rest of the songs in this movie. I want to dance. I want to grow. <laughs> oh my god, that was beautiful. He is the voice of an angel. Meanwhile, Godzilla is living the good life and everything is going his way. Until he's suddenly kidnapped by Tong Kong, the shake dude monkey, also known as the best character in the movie. You better believe I'm repping Team Tong in the next Splatfest. Anyway, Tong Kong reveals that he's from the Turkey Freedom Front and that he needed to save Godzilla because the great cock told him to. At this point, we were all losing our shit watching this unfold, but it only got better once Jake revealed the purpose of his mission. I need to tell you guys about the movie where they go back in time to the first Thanksgiving to get turkeys off the menu. That's right, they go back in time to the first Thanksgiving to get turkeys off the menu. Uh. I just got bored. Everybody out.